So thanks for joining. We're going to be, we're happy to share with you all the latest and greatest with confidently and easily building Python data pipelines in Snowflake. My name is Doris Lee. I'm a product manager for Snowflake Notebooks and Snowpark Pandas, both of which you'll see in the demo today. And I'm Manuel Away. I'm a senior product manager for orchestration at Snowflake, and we'll be going over Snowflake tasks and serverless tasks in this session. So some of the problems that we've been hearing from you, our customers, as well as observing in the industry, are some of the challenges with data engineering. The two main things that we hear about is siloed data, where data is stored and processed in different locations. And this is further exasperated when you're processing using SQL or Python. In addition to the silo data, we have a fragmented practice with a variety of tools um, that are used throughout the whole end-to-end -end process. And this leads to inconsistencies in how you're dealing with data governance and data security, um, which we know are big problems today. So what we'd like to show for you today is how you can build end-to-end -end Python data pipelines using Snowflake. So we'll start with the authoring experience, where you have a variety of tools. You can use VS Code, you can use Streamlit. In this session, we're focused on using Snowflake notebooks. Then transformations, where you just heard in the platform keynote today about Snowpark Pandas. So we'll be showcasing that today in this demo. But you can also use like user-defined aggregate functions. There's async stored procedures and many more options. Snowpark also provides a local testing environment for you to rapidly develop and test. Once you've done all your testing, then you need to uh, deploy and operationalize your pipeline. And you do that using Snowflake Tasks. Snowflake Task is Snowflake's native orchestration uh, system for you to easily manage your task graphs and uh, automate the scheduling of your pipelines. And then lastly, you need DevOps to continually improve and monitor your data pipeline. So now I'm going to hand it over to Doris, who's going to give you a demo of uh, all of this in action. OK, so today we'll be building a Python data engineering workflow. This is an overview of what we'll be doing today. Starting with uh, Snowflake Notebooks, uh, we'll be building our entire data pipeline in Snowflake Notebooks. Um, and then we'll be for our data transformation, Snowpark Pandas. So we'll be using it to uh, aggregate and do some group buys, create new features, um, and visualize our data. And then finally, we're going to store all of this result into a Snowpark Pandas table. And then um, we are going to orchestrate this data engineering pipeline using serverless task with Python API. And this entire notebook is connected to Git so that we can do version control with our code and schedule our notebooks. OK, so let's switch to the demo and we can get started. Cool. So you can see here that I have my Snowflake notebook pulled up here. Uh, my session is active, and I'll be working with the TPCH data set, um, which has customer data, um, as well as uh, information about product uh, and uh, line items and things like that. So um, I'm first going to import um, some Python libraries that I'll be using as part of this uh, demo. I'm also going to import the Snowpark Pandas API, um, as well as creating a Snowpark session. Um, I, you'll see that I'll be using the Snowpark session as part of uh, Snowpark Python, um, as well as uh, the Python API uh, later in this uh, demo. And then this is the path to my um, uh, database and schema. Um, and next, uh, I'm going to use the pd.read snowflake command to read in this table that I have called line item. And you can see that uh, I'm keeping these seven columns. Uh, these are the columns that I am interested in. Now that we have our uh, data in a snow, uh, snow pandas data frame, uh, I'm going to print this out, uh, print out the df.head, which is the first five rows of our data frame um, in, uh, in a streamlit data frame. So we can see all the, the seven columns here, and we're going to print out the um, df.info, which is uh, the columnar information about our uh, data frame. And then next, uh, we are going to look at df.shape, which is the shape of our data frame. And you can see that here we have around 6 million rows uh, and seven columns in this data frame. 
So one of the things I love doing uh, with pandas is to clean up my data, do some pre-processing, doing filtering and aggregations. Uh, and in particular for this data set, uh, I'm interested in the L return flag column. And this column tells me whether um, a product has been returned or not. And so you can see that when I run uh, value counts on it, um, this uh, return flag takes on three values, N, R, and A. Um, and these are the respective value counts uh, for each of these values. Now, I wanted to filter the data frame to only uh, records that does not contain return flag equals to A. So you can see an example of me doing this filtering by um, filtering out all the records that does not contain A. Um, so before the filtering, I have the entire data set, 6 million rows. And after filtering, I have around 4.5 million rows. And then next, um, I'm going to compute a new column called discount amount. Um, and this is going to be the product of three columns, discount, quantity, and extended price. And I'm going to take the product of these three columns and create a new column called discount amount. And you can see that new column being created here. So in addition to the seven columns that we had earlier, we now have this new feature that I've created as part of this data frame. And then um, you can also do things like group by aggregation. Um, you can do things like pivot. So for all those of you that are familiar with pandas, this is the syntax and the API that you, you know and love. It's all similar to what you would do in pandas. Um, so I'm doing my pivot table and uh, reset index here. Um, and then finally, I have a table that has been pivoted, aggregated, um, and then it's time to work with a different uh, table that I have in Snowflake. So my TPCH data set also has this other table called the orders table. Uh, now I'm going to perform a join on the orders table with the transform table that I have with the line item information. So you can see here, I'm going to first uh, read in that orders table, you know, drop a column, a uh, couple of columns that I'm not using. This is what the orders table look like. Note that each of the uh, column names here start with an O underscore, um, so that when we uh, do the join across the two columns, we're going to be joining based on the order key column, which is the same across the two data frames. When we print out the data, uh, when we print out the final data frame that has been joined, you'll see that uh, it contains columns from both the original table that we've transformed as well as the orders table. So this is what the uh, join table looks like. And again, you'll see the, the new columns that are joined uh, being shown here. And then I'm going to really quickly walk through this because we saw a little bit of this earlier. This is just an example of how flexible and easy it is to uh, essentially create new features, work with your data, do group by aggregations, all with the Panda, uh, Snowpark Pandas API. Um, and I love to do this whenever I'm doing feature engineering because I can create new columns and then uh, work with that data. So all of these new columns were created based on my, uh, the information in my base table. And then finally, doing some uh, additional two column calculation with addition and uh, division. So those are, again, the columns that have been created. Finally, uh, I'm going to save this result uh, back to the Snowflake table. So I've uh, saved this as a table called customer underscore profile. Um, and then I'm going to print out uh, this um, as part of uh, a SQL statement. So I did a select star just to take a look at the first 10 rows of customer profile, just to show you that this result, the transform table, has been saved back to Snowflake. Now, one of the things I love about pandas is the ability to visualize your data. And so we're going to show an example of this uh, reading in our, um, the table that we have and then using Seaborn to essentially plot uh, the three columns uh, of, my, um, of my table. So these are the histogram distribution of four of the features in my table. So finally, when you're building data engineering pipelines, right? Like there might be new data that's coming in. Uh, you know, you have new purchase orders that are being made. Uh, so data's mi data might be refreshed, uh, you know, once a minute or once an hour or nightly. And so you want to be running this data pipeline in a recurring manner. And so we want to schedule the notebook with a task so that the uh, customer profile information gets updated. And the way we do that is through the Python API uh, and creating a task with that. 
So uh, here I'm going to import the Python API, which allows me to um, manage uh, my Snowflake objects as well as tasks. And then uh, if you remember, we did a bunch of data transformation earlier. Uh, so I took all of that code, I chucked it into this Python function. So you can see this is a really long function with all the stuff that I did earlier, all the group buys, all the data cleaning and, and so forth. And then the thing I want to call out here is that I have this to Snowflake command, but notice that instead of calling it customer profile, I, I, I also put the timestamp here so that every time you're running this workflow, you should be able to see the timestamp of every single run saved as a different table. I'm doing it for demo purposes. It could be the same name, you could override the table, um, but I wanted to show the timestamps here. Um, and so now we're going to create a stored procedure based on uh, the function that we saw here. So I'm going to create a stored procedure. And again, I'm going to do that through the Python API. Uh, here I'm registering this Python function that I had earlier and then creating a stored procedure called create customer profile SP based on that. And now we've created uh, the stored procedure. You can actually call the stored procedure using the call stored procedure command feeding in the argument. This is how you would do it manually. But because we want to schedule this as a task, we want to run this in a recurring manner. We're going to, again, use the Python API to uh, schedule this as a task. So you can see that with my task, it's a very simple one line definition. It's calling the store procedure that I created. And I set that as a schedule to run once every minute. And I'm going to create this task. And I'm going to use the show task command to show you that this task has been created. It has all of the information about this task. It's running once a minute. But note here that the state of that task is suspended. So by default, any task that is created in Snowflake is in a suspended state unless you activate it. So we're going to resume this task to make sure that this task starts running. Um, you can also do task.execute or task.resume. And then now we have this task running. And you can actually see if I print out the task history, um, you'll see that there are, oops, um, there are um, runs that are being scheduled. Now, we're going to give this uh, pipeline a couple minutes. But in the meanwhile, there's a couple of cool things in this demo that I wanted to show you. Uh, one is that this notebook, again, is connected through Git so that if I make any changes here, I just have this example of, hey, this is a line that I want to remove. Um, so as an example, I'm going to change this markdown, take out this line. And now I have a modification on my notebook, something that I want to commit back to Git. So if I can go to the top right corner and click on uh, the commit button, now this is connected to the remote repository. And I'm just going to say, like, updated my code for demo. And you can also see that this has been the file that is modified. So this shows me that, hey, here are all the files uh, that I've changed. I'm going to press commit. And then I'm going to navigate to my uh, repo. This is a private repo that I have that is connected to this notebook. Um, it is being committed. And if I refresh this page, let's see if that works. OK, so yeah, you can see that um, this has been successfully committed to main. And this uh, update that I just made um, is now on, uh, on the Git repository. And so now let's get back to uh, our demo. So there's two ways that you can look at uh, tasks as part of the um, SnowSight interface. You can either issue a SQL query like this, which explicitly prints out the task history, or you can look at the task details in SnowSight. Um, so um, if you click on, um, if you go into the Snowflake Object Explorer and you go into your task, you'll actually see this page called the task details page. This has, uh, I'm going to refresh this page. Let's see. OK, so uh, this is the uh, task details page. Um, and you can see here that this is a serverless task. We didn't specify a warehouse. We let Snowflake pick what warehouse to use. It's scheduled once every minute. Um, I can even look at a graph of this. Uh, I need to select a warehouse. And you can see that here the, the, um, the task is running. It's being scheduled. I also have a run history, so you can see that, uh, let's see, maybe the network could, OK, there. So you can also see a run history. I ran some of this a couple of days ago. And then these are some of the uh, things that I ran today. Um, 
if we go back to the graph, again, you can see that this, uh, this thing is running. And then if we go back to uh, uh, this, and I run the task history again, I should be able to see um, all of these uh, jobs that have been ha has succeeded, as well as uh, ones that are being scheduled. And if you look at the schedule time and the query start time, they're all one minute apart from each other. So all of this is being done uh, from my task. Um, and then finally, uh, remember that we saved our table um, uh, with a timestamp at the end of it. I'm going to do a show table command that has a regex string that basically shows, hey, like my, schedule, uh, my scheduled task has been running, and here's what it looks like. Uh, every single minute that I have elapsed, I'm basically running this scheduled task. Uh, so yeah, that wraps up our demo, and uh, I'll hand it back to Manuela. Thank you, Doris. So you got to see all of this in action where there is a seamless end-to-end -end flow um, of building your Python data pipelines. And the whole philosophy that we have behind us is making it as easy as possible and giving you the confidence that this is running so that you can focus on building out your business use cases and deriving value from your data. So you saw from, uh, we started with authoring with uh, Snowflake notebooks where you're able to process your data, you're able to train your ML models all in one environment. Second, we use the Snowpark Pandas API, right, to be able to create the store procedure and to create your serverless task. Then using the serverless task, running on Snowflake managed compute so you don't have to worry about right sizing the compute, we're able to run that uh, Python stored procedure that Doris created. And then lastly, with DevOps, with the Git integration, whenever there's changes to your code, you can commit that. There's also database change management. If any of the database objects that your pipeline relies on changes, those will also automatically get updated as well. And using the Python API to be able to uh, interface with your pipeline. And then lastly, you saw the uh, SnowSite UI, um, which is now under the Snowflake uh, trail portfolio of products to give you better observability uh, and monitoring debugging of your pipeline. So there, we just showcased a few of the features which are available, but there are a variety of features which are available to meet you where you are for your specific use case and your requirements. Thanks so much.